where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. When Jesus was born, the world had a semblance of order due to the strength of the Roman government, but peace? Not really. Not as long as there were rulers like Herod, who on a whim could have all the babies of Bethlehem murdered. Not while Rome could tax people into poverty and thieves prowled the hills. Not while hatred and division ruled between Jews, Samaritans, and Gentiles. Not while sin ran rampant. People longed for peace. They longed for a Messiah to bring them peace. Imagine how the shepherds felt when they heard that announcement of the angels, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. In a world of turmoil, war, division, and hatred would come peace. But wait a minute, don't we still have turmoil, war, division, and hatred in our world today? Has anything really changed because of the Messiah coming? People are the same. The world is the same. Well, that is kind of true. So what's the difference? Where does the peace come in? Part of the answer to that can be found in Ephesians 2, 13-14. In writing to the church at Ephesus, Paul reminds these Gentile Christians that they were once outside of God's covenant. They had no part in his promises. They had no hope. But now, and here's where the peace comes in, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off has been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Verse 18 says, For through him... We both have access by one Spirit to the Father. The peace Jesus brought was reconciliation. Before he came, Gentiles and Jews were completely separate, but the church came together as one, no longer Jews and Gentiles, but Christ followers. I'm sure that rocked the first century world. But that wasn't the only peace and reconciliation that Jesus brought. He ended the separation between God and man that had begun in the Garden of Eden with the first sin. That sin, and many others that followed, made each one of us enemies with God. He prepared a way to bring us back together, to reconcile us. Through his sacrificial death on the cross, where he took all of our sins on himself, he paid for our sin, so through believing in him, we can have peace with God. All the generations before the cross looked forward to this in faith, looking for that reconciliation and peace that Jesus would bring, that God had promised. And all the generations after the cross only need to step out in faith and receive that peace. Then and only then will we have the peace of God which passes all understanding that will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Today, if you know the Lord, you'll know what I'm talking about here. But being a Christian doesn't mean life will be easy and perfect. We'll definitely have trouble. In fact, Jesus said to expect trouble. But through the trouble, no matter what's going on, whether it's a chronic pain, COVID, a cancer diagnosis, a natural disaster, we can still have peace. I know it doesn't make sense. That's why they call it the peace that passes all understanding. But Jesus came to bring peace in our hearts, the kind of peace that we have when we remember that he's always with us. He'll never leave us. He hears us when we call on him. He's sovereign and in control of every detail, and that all things he allows in our life will work for good. And we can always look forward to the peace that we will experience with him throughout eternity. Do you have that peace that passes all understanding? 
Do you know someone who needs it? Why don't you introduce them to him today? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to share a treasure God has given you by doing an episode, please contact us. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you'll find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Thank you.